Good day folks, welcome to part 2 of this Toyota 2E engine overhaul. So we've gone ahead and flipped the block over and we are going to install the crank. So we're going to install new bearing shells, measure your oil clearance. These are standard size bearings, the crankshaft measured within tolerance. I had it measured by a machine shop. You can measure at home if you have tools to do so, you'll need an outside micrometer and you subtract the two measurements to get your clearance. Alternatively, you can use plastic gauge as pictured here in the manual, but we're not going to do that, we've already measured it, so we're just going to slap it together. On your main bearings, there are two halves. One half goes into the block, and the other half goes into the cap. This half is the cap side. It has no oil passage, unlike that. The block feeds oil through that hole, there is a groove in here, and the groove is only on this side, because this side is the unloaded side of the bearing, so it does not need the surface area to support the crank. So when we put these in, these go here. They kind of just snap in. That tab there locates into the block. Obviously check that these faces are clean. Any little piece of swarf will raise the bearing. You'll have a high spot, and then that will wear. This place just give them a rub before installing the shell. Just like that. There are caps labeled 1 to 5. They have a direction. Number 3 has an arrow. Number 1, 2, 4, and 5 sort of have an arrow. You get the idea. They have to go in the right order and also in the right direction. Bearing in mind, number 3 also has to hold our thrust washers in place. And the manual, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 being the clutch side of the engine, 1 being the front, which has e crank, pulley, accessory belt, etc. And there is a torque sequence as to how you tighten. Same thing with these. This one has a bearing in. That has to line up, that punch in the bearing lines up with that slot. Okay, so you're going to measure this bearing journal inside micrometer check its oil clearance. Run these bolts down gently with a ratchet. Do not use power tools, that is stupid. Go to the shop manual, find your engine. Torque wrench settings. Main bearing cap bolt, 57 Newton meter. Torque them down, measure your clearance, measure your inside measurement, measure your journal on the, on the crank, subtract it, and then that will give you clearance. If that is within tolerance, then you are good to go. You do that in one, two, three, four, five. Do that with the big ends on the pistons, and you know that your engine's not going to blow up. Okay, here is the crank. Here are all the caps, all assembled. Block. We are ready to drop this in. We're going to put assembly lube in each of these. Make sure these are all coated to get thrust washers to stay into place, stop them falling out when you reassemble. Just use some grease. When you stick caps on, it's particularly important that this face here has nothing at all. No surface debris, no anything. It has to be perfectly clean. Same goes for that. And your bolts, they need to be clean. You don't want to tighten them, you just want to snug them. That's enough torque. So each one of these is about hand tight. Check that you can still rotate the crank. Okay, all these bolts have been torqued, gone through, center, outward in a pattern. Torque them down, and then I've gone over and rechecked everything, make sure nothing has moved or nothing has been forgotten. Everything still rotates. So now it's time to put pistons in. Make sure there are no bits of debris, foreign matter. Okay, the cross hatching looks good. It's good. We'll give these a bit of a wipe out with some solvent. Okay, piston ring. End gap. You have top compression ring, the second compression ring, and the oil control ring, and you have different clearances that they need to fall into. 
So we're going to get our rings. This is the top compression ring here. Second compression ring under there. And then these are our oil control rings. You do not need to worry about the spacer rings for this. And you're going to install it in the bore. These have usually a stamp or a T that faces upwards. And use a piston. Just gently push it down. Seeing as these pistons have a flat top, that'll square it up. You can just see that there's a gap there. I'm going to measure that gap. As the ring heats up during operation, you do not want that closing butting up against each other. Once you're happy with the ring end clearance and the bores, we can install the piston rings on these pistons. The instruction manual says right here, do not spiral compression rings on piston. Use a ring expander tool. You can get your piston ready, or control ring. Where these butt together, that has to face the top. Just like that. So that there is the top. We insert it just like so. That is the oil scraper ring itself. Very thin, very easy to get on. These are not directional. When you do these, try and stagger the end gaps. Get your second ring. This is the second compression ring, so this is second to top. As you can see, there is a punch mark. Right there, if it will focus. The other side is nothing. The punch goes up to the top. So it goes this way. Here is a top compression ring. These rings are directional. They are tapered, so you have to get them on in the right direction. This one here, same again. Just a couple of handy hints. On the piston, on the connecting rod, you have the punch mark for the bearing to sit in. That has to correspond to the punch mark on the bearing cap. So if they're at opposite ends like this, that is wrong. They go this way. So both ends that have no punch mark made up, and both ends that do have made up on this side. On this particular engine, the pistons are directional. So they cannot go backwards. The dish faces towards the front. So this is the correct orientation. So the flat bit on the back of the piston that faces the intake manifold and the dish faces the exhaust manifold. Once you get the piston in, using a spring compressor you get the piston in the bore and then you gently push it halfway down being careful not to touch the crank with these connecting rod bolts and then you rotate the crank slowly into the bearing shell being very careful not to get any contamination in there once you do that you put the cap on, torque the nuts up to their torque setting and you're done, three more to go connecting rod big end cap nuts 39 newton meters Okay, all the pistons are in, everything's all torqued down. Next job is to get accessories such as the seal carriers, etc. on, we'll get the oil pump on. Here is the main seal on the clutch side, the flywheel side of the engine. We're going to pull this out and replace it with a new one. So quite simply, these just pop out and you push the new one in. Don't put any lubrication on this face here, this outer edge. You can see the seal is all lubed up. 
this side we are going to run some RTV where these grooves are machined in. Just needs a thin layer. Clean up and apply some grease to the surface on the crank which the seal runs on. These fasteners can be run down, they do not need a lot of torque. Once it's all on, that's it. Do the same for the oil pump. Here we go, oil pump's done. Same basic principle, new shaft seal there. RTV on the back side. There's a new O-ring behind the oil pump. Make sure that this here is installed, this little spring catch for your cam belt tensioner. We're at a point now where we can install the cylinder head. So we want to make sure that this is completely smooth and there are no particles. Get some brake cleaner or some solvent, give that a very good wipe, make sure there's no oil residues before you install the head gasket. We'll place the head gasket on, we'll place the cylinder head on, make sure these dowel pins are in good condition. Here's a new head gasket installed, obviously use a new one, don't reuse anything. Look at the cylinder head and as to why this engine was tore down. This cylinder head had very worn exhaust valves, very badly pitted, and they were leaking, causing to a loss of compression. We also had very old crusty valve stem seals. Everything has been taken care of. We have machined the exhaust valves, so they have a nice new surface. We have checked all the clearances, make sure they're within tolerance. Everything is looking good. So we've gone ahead and reinstalled all the valves along with new stem seals and then reassemble the camshaft and we have done is just remove some of the casting flash inside of these runners and also the intake runners just check that there's no debris check that your mating surface is completely smooth there are no high spots no particles etc and you reinstall on the engine these engines are also interference, so make sure that your engine is not at dead, top dead centre. Make sure that the pistons are about halfway down the bores. That way there is no chance the piston can touch the valve as you torque it down. When you reuse cylinder head bolts, you can sometimes get away with it, but it's not recommended. And the reason for that is these are torqued to a point where they deform to a point where they will not return to their original shape. They are referred to as torque to yield. Always use new ones in my opinion. Okay so we've just ran these bolts down gently just using a ratchet. They are not even hand tight, they are merely just nipped up. And here are our torque sequence. So stage one, 29 newton meters. And then stage 2, 49 newton meters. Stage 3, tighten 90 degrees, and that is where the bolts will stretch. So you tighten them usually from the center out in a bit of a spiral staggered pattern. Okay, so they're all torqued down. Next step is to put the sump on. Oil pickup needs to go on first. And then we can put on the flywheel, intake manifold. Well, you're good to go. You can whack on the timing belt and this engine's pretty much ready to drop in the car. To do a timing belt on this engine, that notch there has to go on the notch on that oil pump housing. This is your crank. Your cam 2E has to line up at the center punch right through there. You eye it up. That is our top dead center. That is our top dead centre. Obviously you replace your tensioner and your idler and then you're ready to install the cam belt. Once you have the cam belt on and you're happy with this position, that mark is lined up, as is that. Install this tensioner spring, rotate the crank two times, so one revolution of the camshaft, recheck your timing marks and if it's all good, tighten that fastener up. Right, before the engine goes back in the car, last job is to just seal this up with some RTV. 
then we will put the sump on. The sump is now on. Okay, that pretty much sums it up. We'll just quickly put the rocker cover back on so we keep dust out. We'll just tape over these intake runners, that port there. And then that will pretty much be it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for when we put this into the Corolla.